woke up and I wasn't there. It's all right. I wanted an early start. Need to finish digging the hole for the pond, uh, sandpit liner. Do you know, I really appreciate you going through all this trouble. It's no trouble. If Bethany's happy, you're happy. It's all I care mm -hmm. about. I'm really happy. What's in the bag? Ah. Stuff for the sandpit. Ta da Don't worry. I've got a pramble that'll go on there. Fits a tree. Hey, wait till you see this. Video shop chucks it out. I'll bury the bottom bit in the sand. Bethany won't know the difference. They're always throwing these things out. I used to have a life-size Angina Jolie in my bedroom and... There I met you. She went straight into the bed first. Mm. Come on. How can you eat at a time like this? Starving ourselves won't bring back that much, Michael. I'm just as nervous as you. And I'm putting on a brave face for that. All right. Hey. Smashing bit of scram that chess, lad. Tuck in. Fair enough. No point it going to waste. Why haven't the kidnappers been in touch with all this? It's early days. They will be soon, I'm sure. They leave it much longer. They need to out of house and home. Maybe they're not feeding him. Maybe they've hurt him. What if they've killed him? Oh, don't talk soft. Get your coat on. You're going to be late for school. It's half term. Is that school ever open? Them flaming teachers have more holidays than Judith Chalmers. Was that the dashing groom going out? Not that he's dashed anywhere for years, mind. Are you talking about Ken? He's just nipped to the shop. Gotten to buy a hook, has he? Eh? Hey? To replace the hand you bit off yesterday. From what I hear, he'd barely finished proposing and you were saying yes. Hang on a minute. You've been on at us for years to get married. I thought you'd be pleased. I would be if you'd done things the right way. Every girl knows you should keep a fella waiting for your answer. Let him stew. Yeah, well, I'm not exactly a girl anymore, am I? And besides, I've kept Ken waiting quite long enough. I doubt Wanda will agree. I don't know I'm going to break the news. We're meeting up for a funeral later. At least she'll be wearing black. She didn't stand a chance with Ken. She didn't stand a chance with Clark Gable. Didn't stop her turning to drink when he passed on. She's not been the same since. Even now, she's only got to see a wing nut and it sets her off. <sighs> You're driving me do Lally sat there grinding your teeth. I went to work. How can I? I promised the lad I'd stay here. I can talk to kidnappers. Go on. Get over at Rob before you're down to your gums. Hello? Oh, it's you, mate. No, 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 no. They don't make contacts. Wait, wait. Calm down, Chez. It's only dinner time. Look, I I'll let you know as soon as how it happens. Hey. And keep your chin up, eh, pal? Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Chesney. You could hardly speak for crying. If I get my hands on them... S what? Donald Pleasance has just incriminated himself, but he don't know it yet. What are you on about? The telly. It's good into that Columbo. Don't miss a trick even with the one eye. Probably solve crimes in half time if you had both. Maybe that's the answer. The answer to what? This! Captain Fish were right. We should have called coppers in straight off. You're not serious. We can't sit here doing now. That little lad's heart's breaking. And what are police going to do? Well, uh, loads of things. They, they could do a trace on the phone when the kidnappers call. Get forensic and go over the, the ransom note. After what them so-and-sos have done to Chess, I just want them caught. <laughs> that chance of that. For starters, coppers won't give a toss about finding a dog. At least alone a dog of yours. <laughs> and what if kidnappers get wind? Do you really want Chesney finding Schmeichel's ear on doormat? I thought not. <laughs> no. We're just gonna have to wait it out. Now, you nipped up to if you can get us dinner, eh? Fresh air will do you good. No way. I told you. I swore to that lad I'd stay by this phone whatever. Fine. Fine. I'll go then, shall I? I 
thought I'd feel much worse than this in the morning. Do you know, I seem to remember someone saying that morning sickness ain't that bad. If it's a boy. Mm -hmm. Could be an old wife's tale, though. Yeah, probably your old wife. <laughs> hey, good one. Mm -hmm. Could be right, that. Boy or girl, they've got a father to be proud of. Because no one has ever put my dad in his place the way you did. Mm. Not without him smearing them all over the pavement, you mean? He wouldn't dare. You wouldn't bank to rights and he knew it. The all he's going to remember is me humiliating him. And that's going to be great. He's going to be itching to even things up. Or maybe he'll have learnt his lesson at last. <laughs> yeah. Not hold your breath. Wouldn't it be great, though, if he'll just leave us in peace to concentrate on the baby? Yeah, yeah, it would be. Let's face it, I've got about as much chance of getting Tommy off me back as Quasimodo had getting shot of his hump. What's happened? Was the chippy closed? Worse. Kidnappers just rang. No, no, I, I've been sat there all the time. Well, they got me mobile. Just so I get into the front of Chippy Q and all. But how did he get your number? <laughs> Don't ask me. All I know is, we're not dealing with amateurs, that's for sure. Made me blood run cold. What did they say? All kinds of threats about what they do to the poor animal. Like what? Put it this way. It jumped fences a sight easier. They never see any pups. Any road, upshot is, they want me to make drop now. They'll give me instructions on my mobile as I go. Right. I'll get me coat on. Uh, no, love. Ask me me. Alone. No. No way. This is no job for a woman. I can't let you face... Thank you. I reckon they broke mould when they made Les Battersby. But kidnappers are calling it shots now. We have to do exactly as they say. I, I can't let you go on your own. It's too risky. No risk's too great for my son's happiness. And it's a far, far better thing I'm doing now than I've ever done. Wish me luck. What do you think? That it's a cloudy day in February. Why on earth? They're for the funeral, to shroud me grief. Yeah, to have a nose at what's going on, more like. Are you going to give me your opinion? Only I'd never tell myself. I mean, for one thing, I can't see properly. And it's such a fine line between Jackie Onassis and Roy Orbison. They look fine. Hello. Hello. Oh, I say, there's now like young love. And that's now like it. Mother, will you stop spitting poison? This is what you want, isn't it? I want a new hip. Doesn't mean I've got to be thrilled about it. It's about being practical. Yeah, well, so is us getting married. It makes everything so much less complicated, particularly on the financial front. It believes me, have quite a headache. Oh? Yeah, it's been a nightmare trying to make a will with Peter and Tracy to keep happy, not to mention Adam and Amy. Oh, don't forget your Daniel. And then, of course, it's Daniel. I mean, just imagine all the squabbling and resentment that's going to arise, however I divide it up. What's that got to do with us getting married? Well, in the absence of a will, which I have happily given up on, everything goes to you. So, nobody's got an axe to grind, and you can divide the money up how you see fit. And they say romance is dead. I'm filling up here. Hang on a minute. You tore up the will and then proposed, thinking you'd leave me to sort out the financial mess after you've gone. <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't like that. You know very well why I want to marry you. I'm just pointing out the practical advantages. And, as well as my estate, you'll have pension rights and there'll be a bereavement allowance and a bereavement payment when I die. Careful. She'll be smothering you on your honeymoon. I can't believe I'm hearing this, Ken. You've got it all worked out down to the last penny. Well, I'm sorry to muck up your calculations, but I marry for love, not benefit entitlement. The wedding's off. Lucky I never bought a hat. <sighs> It's bad form not to shed a tear at a funeral, but with the likes of Teresa Jordan, nature needs a helping hand. Who's she? 
The not-so-dear departed. President of our whist drive. Tess the Trump, they called her. I don't know why. She were longer on sleeves than on talent, if you take me meaning. No, I don't, actually. She had that many cards up there. Happened she did shuffle off this mortal coil. I hope they emptied her cardigan. Else she'll take half the creme up with her. You all right, Mum? Oh, don't expect an answer from contrary Mary. She changes her mind more often than her sheets. Not that that's saying much. Uh, Grant, I don't think Mum wants to listen to this. Haven't you got that funeral to go to or something? All right, I know when I'm not wanted. But I'll say this. Ken will only go down on one knee so many times. In fact, if you leave it much longer, he won't be able to get up again without help. So think on. Maybe if he had gone down on one knee, there wouldn't be a problem. Why did you change your mind, Mum? I mean, it made sense oh, for you and Oh, stop Dad. it, Tracy. You sound like him. Well, I just don't understand. I mean, people say I'm unpredictable, but at least I know what I want and who I want. Well, so do I. We'd never have said yes in the first place otherwise. Well, then why Because... I... I don't want to hear about sense and practicality and inheritances. I know I'm the wrong side of 40, and OK, three marriages, but that doesn't mean to say that I don't want the same things any other brides want. I never knew you felt this strongly about it. Yeah, well, believe it or not, your mother's still got some emotional needs left. I want him to tell me why he wants to marry me. I want a bit of romance. Something's gone wrong. They've done so much to him. I know it. I'd like to see him try. You don't mess with a dog that size. You don't know him like I do. Schmeichel's dead gentle. He won't let her fly. I remember one time, this little terrier barked him. He'd run three streets before I caught up with him. But I told him it were all right. As long as he were me, I'd protect him. He'd be safe. Your mum will make sure he's OK. She don't even like him. I'm the only mate Schmeichel's got. And he was the best mate he ever had. He never picked on me or shouted at me. Always wagged his tail when he saw us. Always listened to me. Cos I was never in the way with him. He wanted to be with me. And I want to be with him. Go on. Go on. Where are you, lad? Where are they? Oh, whoa! What are you doing? You nearly choked on me sapphire. Sorry. We thought you were your man. Charming. Why, what's going on? The last bloke this keen to see her gave her a summons. She's gone to meet the kidnappers. Did she take the ransom money? Of course she did. They wanted her to make the drop. Did they tell you that? Yeah. I thought you said they rang Stella on a mobile. So? They rang her on a mobile. What difference does it make? Well, let's just hope there's no shops on the way to this drop. What do you need? Well, 250 notes. Can buy you a nice pair of shoes, that. And an handbag. Oh, no, you don't think she... No, she wouldn't. Your mother's facing down hardened criminals. Alone. And you're sat there, casually waving your sausage about, accusing her of all. All right, all right. I'm sorry. I take it back. It was just a thought. Hi, Mum. Hi, darling. Bethany's upstairs. Yeah. Dreaming of all the fun she's going to have with a bust wheelbarrow and half a squirrel. <laughs> it's going to look more like a road accident than a play area. Oh, shut up. Where's the gooter? In the garden. Oh, yeah, please, he warm me up. So how's he getting on? No, should we know? You haven't been near the house all afternoon. You're kidding, it's freezing. He's not even at least had a cuppa. I took some mugs out to him. Till a couple of hours ago, when he was so surprised to see me, Mummy fell down early, Doug. Oh, poor thing. I didn't even mention anything. We've been texting like mad all afternoon. Is he OK? Yeah, it's fine. I think he was more embarrassed than hurt, so I just let him get on with it. I shouldn't mention it. Oh, will do. We can have a laugh about it. Mm. OK. Mm. Sarah, I'm going to get some tea in a bit. Shall I get you some tea? Uh, no, Mum, I'm all right, thanks, cos I'm going to stay at Scooters tonight once I've got Beth settled. But thank you anyway. Hey. Hey. All right. Oh, here we go. Round two. I don't think so. 
only you could see how ridiculous you look. I could say the same about you and him. Forget us. It's our creek you should be worried about. Instead of propping up the bar playing the hard man, you should be at home playing the father while you still can. Me and Craig are all right. Are you? I'm warning you, Dad. If you don't get your act together, you're going to lose him. Same as you did me. I merely explained the practical benefits of marriage. We're both grown-ups, after all. But then she exploded. And that was that. Um, there's one thing I've learned in this life, Kenneth. The promise of a beautiful woman is like the neck of a corn-fed capon. Both get broken eventually. But you reach a certain age and you think you're beyond empty gestures and stupid games. I'm not so sure. Granted, I've had more than my fair share of knockback, but I know this. When it comes to proposals, oh, any woman worth having would rather have a bouquet than a balance sheet, however long in twos. Yeah, well, I couldn't have put it better myself. I can't believe you made such a mess of it, Dad. Did you even mention the word love? Mm. When you're close to someone, some things don't need saying. Uh, yes, they do, even more. You know, it strikes me you're treating your wedding ring like your favourite old slippers. Something you can pop on whenever you feel like it without making any effort. Tracy, enough. As a matter of fact, I think things have turned out for the best. I mean, we were getting on fine until all this came up. We don't need to be married. We never did, we never will, so... Please, can we just draw a line under the whole fiasco and move on, OK? At this rate, it'll be finished for Christmas. Look, I don't want to hear it. Oh, please, just two minutes, mate. Look, I don't want to... I don't want to talk about what happened. There's no I can say. I just want you to know that I know how you're feeling. You what? I do. When I weren't much older than you, my Auntie Iris let something slip about me dad, your granddad. Something that I didn't know that knocked me for six. What was it? Well, after I was born, my mum were laid up for a while, so he had to cope on his own. He were up half the night with me, off to work at six, and he couldn't handle it. So he walked. Only for a few months, but I was furious. <laughs> Just for a change. <laughs> anyway, when I confronted him about it, he didn't make any excuses or all like that. That weren't his style. He just said he'd been weak. Let us down. Let me down, let me mum down. That he were ashamed. And he were. It's the only time I ever saw me a tear in his eye. What happened? Well, all the fishing trips, Saturday afternoons at Hillsborough, Sunday mornings messing about with a Zephyr, I all forgot, chucked out the window. I couldn't forgive him. He didn't expect me to. But you and him got on fine. Eventually. After a lot of wasted time. It weren't until I were up half the night with our Katie tearing my hair out that I realised that I'd give anything, anything, just for her to stop crying. Just for an extra hour's kip. And I was sharing the Lord with your mum. But most of all, even though some nights I were desperate, I always loved Katie. More than anything. Like Grandad were you? Yeah. It didn't make what he did was right, but I understood why. I understood him. Look, I'm not asking you for forgiveness. I was weak. I've let you down. But I pray to God that I don't have to wait until you've got a 14-year-old son before you understand how I could get things so wrong. You stand there much longer, you'll have a nose like Joe Buckley. Yeah, Chaz. Done you not chocolate? I don't want it. <sighs> Why aren't they formed? I should never let your mum go. She could be lying in a gutter somewhere. Mm, not for the first time. <laughs> I'm telling you, that woman is worth her weight in gold. And that's a lot of gold. 
Well, go on, answer it then. Yeah? Wrong flaming number! I'm sick of this. I need a drink. Jess, I've got some ale cooling in the outside privy. Nip and get us one, eh? Good lad. Schmeichel. Schmeichel? Schmeichel? Schmeichel! 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 Oh, good boy! Oh, I'm never ever gonna let you go again! Oh, it doesn't matter how many times I see it at the kennels. You never get tired of seeing a lad and his dog reunited. Oh, I think just the ones will be enough for me. 